Recently, a viewer asked a question having to do with minor blues. And at first I thought, hey, this is no problem. I played a minor blues many, many times and I can definitely share some information. The thing is, when I started to think about it a little more, I realized how actually sort of profound the questions were. They left them just open enough for me to think about, well, what did they mean by this or that? So I decided to approach the general topic from a variety of directions, and hopefully you can get something from it as we talk today about the mighty minor blues. Welcome to Learn Jazz Bass with Matt Rabicki. If you're interested in finding out more about how to play jazz bass, you know the deal. Like, subscribe, check below for a link for a PDF related to today's discussion and some other links too that will have to do with what we're talking about. So as I said, we're talking about the minor blues today and I know it's been a while since I've made a video. Life kind of got in the way, but I'm back for today and I'm excited to talk about this topic. Just to kind of get us started, let's talk about a broad overview very quickly about the minor blues and what makes it sort of different, what are some characteristics of it that make it different from a regular blues. The first thing is that the one chord and the four chord are actually minor as opposed to major or dominant. However, the form of 12 bars does generally usually stay the same. It does go to the uh, four chord, it's a minor four chord in bar five, but there's a couple things that are different. One thing is that it does not go to the four chord in bar two. In fact, it's usually four measures of just that one minor chord. Then in bar five, it goes to four minor, as I mentioned. It does not usually go to sharp four uh, diminished in bar six. So it's two measures of, um, of the minor four chord, uh, measures five and six, and then seven, eight, go back to the minor one chord. Another interesting thing is the turnaround. Now there's a variety of turnarounds that happen in minor blueses, but they generally all sort of still follow the idea of some kind of tension and release, some kind of two five, some kind of idea of the two five of getting back to the home sound of that one minor chord. The couple of ways that, that uh, are generally used are um, oftentimes uh, the two chord will be a dominant chord. So if we're in the key of C minor, the two chord would be D minor or D minor seven flat five actually, but instead it's a D seven. So a dominant seven chord on the two chord and then the five is also a dominant seven. The five in a minor blues tends to have a flat nine on it because that references the relative major key of the minor uh, blues sound. So we've got this sort of two sound and then a five with a flat nine. Another thing that might happen is that we have, as I said, the two minor seven flat five, sometimes called half diminished. So two half diminished to five seven flat nine to the one minor. Another really interesting thing that happens that I don't really exactly know the reason for, although I have some suspicions, would be that in the turnaround, where the two would exist is actually a flat six, seven. So what that means is if we're in C minor, we're talking about A flat seven instead of D minor seven flat five. That A flat seven does go to the five, seven flat nine. That A flat seven, you could think of it as a tritone substitution for the two seven. So the D seven, its tritone substitution is A flat seven. They share uh, the tritone between them, the common co notes, core, uh, common co uh, notes. If someone, by the way, has the specific reason why this is used so often, I would love to have sort of a formal understanding, uh, although I'm pretty sure this is kind of how it came about. It's also common to sort of do um, what you might say sometimes it's like people call it various things, but basically, again, if you're in the key of C minor, where that two chord would happen would be a two five to the flat two. So if you're in C minor, you would have E flat minor seven to A flat seven in one bar. Then the next bar where the five would be, 
you would have two minor seven flat five to five seven. So it's like moving up a half step and then back down a half step to the two five. That's a common thing to ha that happens in bebop and lots of other kinds of music. It may sort of be brought from there as well. But the idea is this is just another kind of turnaround. The last kind of turnaround is the footprints turnaround. And this, as you probably know, is a minor blues as well. But this turnaround is so strange and such a maze of problems. Everything from Wayne Shorter's own hand to what he said about it to how it's played on a variety of recordings, it's a really a big, big mystery. And so if you're gonna play footprints, to play that turnaround, you really gotta talk to your bandmates, uh, talk to your teachers and so on, and get a sense of what they want to play or what they want you to play there, because there's a lot of options for the harmony to play on that turnaround. So I'm done talking about it now. <laughs> Let's play. Let's hear some great bass lines from some great players. This was the first thing I thought about hey, let's take a look at what great bass players play on a single chorus of a minor blues. So let's take a listen now. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is Sam Jones playing on Big P from Cannonball Adderley live at the Lighthouse. This is an intro to the tune and he is playing alone, which is very hip. And here we have that flat six, seven to five, seven that I was talking about. So let's check it out. Three. Next is Ron Carter on the great tune Israel. And notice some interesting note choices that we have here from Ron. And here we've got that minor two five, the, I'm sorry, the minor seven flat five to five as a turnaround. Check it out. Next is Paul Chambers on Stolen Moments, the great tune from the great album, The Blues and the Abstract Truth by Oliver Nelson. Here are some interesting choices from Paul Chambers on this blues. There's some notes that don't make a whole lot of sense on paper or analytically, but it sounds great when you listen to the original recording. So let's take a listen to this one. And here's Butch Warren on Out of the Night. We took a look at a little portion of this in another video, but here's a full chorus of this minor blues. And here again is that flat uh, six going to five as part of the turnaround. Um, I think this is just a wonderful line. This is the kind of one that to me has a really beautiful melody inside it. In other words, it is a melody in and of itself. So let's take a listen to that. And here's Ray Brown on Burke's Works, one of the versions that he played over his career. He probably played it many, many times. This is a minor blues, but what's interesting is that in bar five, it doesn't go to the four minor chord. In fact, it goes to that flat six dominant chord we talked about. So here it's in B flat minor. The four minor chord would be E flat minor seven, but instead it goes to G flat seven. There's a couple of shared notes in there, so it kind of makes sense, but it definitely throws one for a loop when you try to play through it accurately. And ironically, what I picked out of the transcription as I play it over is 
a bit of Ray Brown sounding a little bit like he's struggling with that moment. It's a little bit disjointed there. I think he realizes after he plays E flat on the downbeat, oh wait, this is supposed to be G flat seven. So see if you can hear that as we play uh, this version of Bar uh, Burke's works. <laughs> For our last specific example, we're going to talk about Percy Heath on a tune called The Quota from his brother Jimmy Heath. And there's a bass solo at the end of the tune, and at the very end of his solo, he plays a walking line for a chorus to get back into the chorus out, into the head out. So let's take a listen to what he does on The Quota. So I found those some pretty interesting approaches to different ways of playing minor blues. But there are some general observations that I made. I listened to a lot of minor blues specifically, and I've got a playlist that I'm gonna link below so that you can hear what I was listening to. I listened very carefully to the bass lines and sort of uh, paid attention to some broad things that were happening. There's a few tools that came up a time and again, at least a few times, over a multitude of players. It's in what we heard a little bit, but the kind of specific tools that I'm talking about, I think are a little better extracted uh, on your own and worked on on your own and just sort of think about and try to apply them yourself. Uh, the first one is a descending line uh, with repeating notes. This is a very common sort of cliche thing to do. So if we're in F minor, B flat minor. That's also similar to that sort of cliche, that old tune, hit the road jack. C, B flat, A flat, right? Or C, B flat, A, A flat, G, like that. So it's got that kind of cliche sound to it. It always works, it sounds good. Additionally, more than one person plays lines in ascending thirds, intervals of thirds. So again, if we're in C minor, it would go. Or in F minor. And you notice what I did in both those examples there is another common thing that I heard through multiple players. And that's using the natural seven or leading tone as you would call it, when there is a big chord change or when you're sort of reinstating the sound of the tonic. So if you're in F minor, you're using an E natural to pull to the F on the root as opposed to E flat. This happens lots of places when it changes to the four, when it goes back to the one, and so on. So that's a common thing that happens as well. Additionally, I found that there was a pretty common use of approaching and leaving the root from chromatic, with chromatic movement. Like I said, they're approaching from the leading tone, uh, but sort of staying in this chromatic um, winding little road around the root. So that, that would be like, uh, going, if we're in F minor, right, we would go E flat, E natural, F, back to E flat, B flat minor, A flat, A, B flat, A, A flat, or C minor, or sort of enclosing the C minor, so B flat, B natural, D flat, C, something like that, or um, going from the two, the D, D flat, C. Let's see. That's a common thing that happens as well. And then another interesting thing I found was that there's not a lot of attention paid to what should be the natural six on the minor, I'm sorry, the, the flat six, excuse me, there's not a lot of attention paid to the flat six 
in the sort of chord scale that's played on the minor one chord. What I mean is if we have D minor, we're thinking in the key of F major and there's a B flat there. But very often on D minor, folks would play a B natural instead. And this happens sort of across bass players and across sort of tunes. So I, I'm not sure if that's a matter of choice, if that's a matter of just sort of mistake, if that's a matter of just kind of thinking about the line broadly, but I thought it was an interesting thing. So instead of D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, D, E, F, G, A, B, natural, C, D, like a Dorian. Instead, you know, one thing that the you, uh, viewer asked that I found really engaging was they said that they were stuck playing a lot of the same things and they were studying Mr. PC from Paul Chambers, the Paul Chambers line on the famous tune Mr. PC. And they said that they were stuck playing the same thing over and over again. And that really struck me and made me think again about another way to talk about the minor blues, another way to talk about walking in general. And that's how do we create our own vocabulary? Well, I've got some ideas on that. So let's take a look now at some ways to make things our own. So let's do one sort of classic thing for building our own vocabulary, and that's to take and steal from the masters. You were studying Mr. PC. So let's take a little portion of that line and let's try to make it our own. Let's take a look at a little bit of Mr. PC and put it in all 12 keys. So let me just play this line out of context a little bit. This is um, in the middle of the tune. It's not right at the beginning or the end. Um, but I think it is a, a neat line that uh, Paul Chambers plays. So uh, starting from the very beginning, he plays. heard a lot of that approach and leaving by chromatic half step there, didn't you? Uh, and I also think this is a really neat melody in and of itself. So my idea for our little exercise is that I took the first two measures resolving uh, or continuing on with the one minor chord. So I wrote down here um, an analysis of the line. We have the root C two, the, th the second uh, uh, note of the scale, flat three, E natural is the natural third from C. He's on four there, this, although this is not the four minor chord, but he sort of implies that because F to A flat, which is the flat six, kind of goes like he wants to go to the minor four there, although it doesn't. G and then a chromatic approach note, a leading tone back to C. So, or as fast as they do it, somewhere around there. So now let's take those nine notes and put them in every key. I'm gonna play this line in its entirety, one course through, and then the music is gonna keep going and you'll see what's written here that I've taken these essentially three measures and we'll go from one key to the next to the next. So let's check that out. So of course this is just a little sample and that's okay uh, because you are going to take the idea and run with it. 
Steal anything and everything that you can, put it in every key that you can, try to apply it right away as soon as possible. That's part of the key of keeping it uh, in your mind and in your body and in your ability. So um, steal from others, put it in different keys, take it, it's yours. So another thing that we can do to increase our own vocabulary is to continue to steal, but from other tunes that aren't minor blues. So what I've got here is a series of some long uh, uh, sets of minor chords that we can use when we've got this one minor chord in a minor blues. Uh, we've got Ray Brown, a work song, Percy Heath, Charlie Hayden, Oscar Pettiford, and so on. I'm gonna do a play along and just go from one to the next. Hopefully you'll be able to get some sense of what's going on there. There's a little pause and dominant chord when it changes keys. Um, but I think there's some neat ways that we can take from things that aren't minor blues. So let's check it out. So hopefully that was a little bit of a help. Another option is to do something that Ron Carter teaches, and he doesn't have a name for this necessarily that I know of, but I call it Ron Carter's vertical vines. And that's because the image sort of looks like uh, hanging vines down on the page. And the general idea is that you are laying out available notes across a whole measure so that you can pick and choose and visually see the connection from one note to the next. Now, what's interesting um, is that theoretically all the notes exist, right, on every single beat. But in order to make it somewhat legible, what Ron does is he pretty much puts just basic chord tones, but starting from below the root or sort of as low as you can reasonably go and as high as is sort of super comfortable. So generally here um, in a D minor seven, we, we use the low F here because that's available in D minor seven and the high F here, that's pretty much the, the, the width of how far we're going, the, the, the parameters. But as you can see, uh, each beat has all these chord tones available. So what are your choices as you go from one to the other? And you can fill in, just fill in these empty um, uh, note heads that I've got if you want to experiment on yourself with yourself and, and find um, interesting uh, ways to get around. Now it's gonna sound a little bit stale because it's just chord tones, but I think you get the idea that you throw any other uh, notes in there, approach notes, other scale notes, or so on, as available notes on a given beat you are gonna find some interesting connections. And if nothing else, it can help you really visualize the movement from one beat to the next. So on the top here is one whole chorus of a D minor blues. And I've just got the options there. Nothing's filled in. These are just all the available options on these chords. Then below it in the next chorus, I chose some of these notes, these chord tones myself, that uh, I thought sounded pretty good, again, just using these chord tones. So they sound like this. So again, it's not the most interesting line in the world, but hopefully this gives you some new ideas about coming up with lines on your own. And of course you can do this for any 
tune with any changes, you can do this sort of idea. So on the next page of the PDF, I provided two courses with nothing chosen so that you can choose your entire line uh, from this vertical vines idea. And then the following page is a completely empty other two measures of minor blues that you may want to write your own. I'm just trying to encourage you to really formally go out and just try to create something new. It helps to write it down sometimes. Uh, I would also say take some time, even if you're not thinking along this vertical vines idea, just take some time and figure out going from one chord to the next or one bar to the next. And finally, I wanna encourage you to try some different things to come up with your own vocabulary. What I mean by that is perhaps choose some bass lines that aren't from jazz players. Here on the next page in the PDF, I've got uh, one of the extrapolated bass lines from one of the Bach chorales. Now on, in the chorale, it's played as eighth notes, but here I've placed it out as quarter notes and it just so happens it's a long string of a minor G minor seven going to C minor seven, the beginning of a minor blues, a G minor blues. So you can take that you can, from classical music. You can look in all other kinds of music, in hip hop, in rock music, in funk, see what you can find and apply it when you can. If you find something that you like, figure out how to put it into your walking bass line. So let's hear what this uh, Bach sounds like. Uh, and it's got a really neat movement to it and a really neat melody in and of itself. As I heard the great Benjamin Zander say, uh, Bach is not about the higher notes, but the secret is his genius with the bass notes in his compositions. So let's take a listen to this real quick. I think it's a pretty neat way to start a line, don't you? I think it sounds really neat and not exactly what you'd expect from a jazz bass player. Nonetheless, I think it's a great way to, you know, get a new idea for a bass line. This is something new to me, for example. So look everywhere that you can and try to create your own vocabulary. Things can feel stale. I totally get it. It happens to me all the time. You know, it's a continuing battle to keep trying to play things interesting and make things fresh for ourselves. And that's okay. It's a lot of fun. One good thing is the more you play, the more options you will hear, the more you transcribe, the more options that are available to you. And so I encourage you to spend time figuring out your own vocabulary. I hope that you've gotten something out of today's lesson. Thanks so much for joining me. As always, like, subscribe, look for the link for the PDF below. And remember, straight ahead and strive for tone.